stopwatch, but it's all too little, all too late. And G2 are on to the Nexus turrets. Those are down. Faker makes his stand, but he'll be buried beneath the X. G2 will repeat the success of the first round Robin and take down SKT. Not since Bangkok Titans got crushed four years ago, Invictus Gaming smashed the world record. They smash SKT. What's up, everybody, and welcome to Esports in 30. I'm Lisa Duan, this is Matt Hempstead, and we got a lot to talk about from the mid-season Invitational. Yep. Matt, we're only four days in. Uh, what are your initial thoughts so far? Uh, well, first thing that comes to mind is Invictus Gaming is really damn good. Um, but, I mean, in a broader scale, G2 has been really impressive, especially against SKT since they beat them twice. And we're so used to seeing SKT as a super dominant Korean force, right. right? But all of a sudden, now they look kind of human, and they might not even be the second best team at this tournament. So Korea is kind of descending down the, the international ladder a little bit. Um, but going into the last couple of days, I think all eyes are on Team Liquid to see if they can actually pull through and go to group stage for once. So fingers crossed for them. If not, uh, fourth place. Ah, uh, the memes! Right. All right, well, let's get to it, shall we? Before we call up our friend Koobs, let's see how the best of the West fared against those beasts of the East. Vince is the type of player you can trust on this Akali. You can say, hey, I know this guy's going to make something happen. Ooh. Let's invest in this lane. And right now, he's making something happen in the 1v1. He's able to find the kill before Zhu Hao's able to get himself involved. Nall tries to get away. Impact's going to explode the barrel, but now he finds himself caught between three members. Over the wall comes Jensen. Mop and Bucket at the ready. Here's the cleanup Ooh. crew. Unstoppable for Team Liquid. It's a double make it a triple. Here we go. Big Coral going to be in some trouble. Cosmic Radiant's going to be coming in from Nall, keeping himself alive, but that's not going to be the main target. Instead, it's going to be Zero's trying to defensively all going to be run down. Jensen going into the stopwatch, keeping himself alive. Pallet not quite able to find the kill. Jensen finally going to be shut down. But Team Liquid will crush Fongbu Buffalo in their base. And the redemption story for TL starts with a 2-0. Hanabi completes the TP, and this will be just in time for the Guardian Angel to come back up. That's Hanabi already down. Shousey's running for his life. Jensen dashes all the way in, waits for the taunt to come out. He turns his attention over to Rather. Double is now waiting for Perks. Perks potentially caught out here. He's going to try to dash away to save him. The calling is coming out. Perks now set to fall. That's going to be all she wrote. Double it, finding the solo kill. Flash Wolf looking to start this one off. TP's coming in from both of the top laners. Core JJ is already going to be eliminated. Double is now going to be in some trouble. Four-man lockdown from the mid laner. It's a double kill over to Betty, and the Flash Wolves will rend Team Liquid asunder. Sitting on that sheen. Fallfield's Warhammer for Perks as he gets caught out. Take a look at the mini-map. Fake is coming from mid lane. Perks gets first blood onto Mata. Nexus turret number two is being focused. That's Mata down. Teddy flashes away. That's not over yet. The Nexus turret falls. Ladies and gentlemen watching MSI, do you believe G2 obliterate SKT? Back to the pit. All do is make oh. Oh. oh, no. The smite is early. A kill comes through as well. Make it a second. The solo laners do absolutely everything for G2. I'm not sure that Jensen's going to be able to actually finish this off. And look at Caps going in. Hungry for blood, using everything to go and stealing the Whoa. Oh, and killing with it. Oh. Wait, not going in quite as aggressively as he sees the world enter going. Caps might just be in trouble. Dashes through, dodges out there. That's going to be massive. Missing a third proc in the Dark and Blade Impact. Running out of time here. Caps going to try to take him down. Perfectly timed. Caps as Wonder closes in over the wall. He goes looking to maybe grab himself a bone skewer. Nine, 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 nine. Some damage on the enemy jungler, make it two. No wonder coming around from the side. He has the ulti ready, and he's found his way onto Teddy. The damage comes down, and X marks the spot. And G2 are on to the Nexus turrets. Those are down. Faker makes his stand, but he'll be buried beneath the X. G2 will repeat the success of the first round Robin and take down SKT. Well, there you have it. G2's looking very good so far at MSI. To help us tackle all of the madness from the tournament, we've got the late game king himself, Koobs, joining us. How's it going? Ah, pretty good, guys. How are you? Good, not good. too bad. Not too bad. We've got so much to talk about. So let's start off with breaking down G2. Yeah. So there has been a lot of hype about G2, but I don't think a lot of people expected them to do this well, even beating SKT like twice. twice. So how has this team really been able to beat one of the top Korean teams with so much success? 
Yeah, I think a lot of people thought that Worlds was a little bit of a fluke, but the truth is League has shifted a lot more into individual skill and Chaos being the name of the game. So G2 has a lot of individual talent and they're willing to try new uh, champions and new strategies that people are not used to after years of this super slow ward control uh, Korean style of play. So. For SKT and for, for Korea as a region, their inability to adapt over the last five or six months and G2 kind of embracing their, their chaos creates this interesting dynamic of it's actually Korea having to play catch up with China and Europe versus the other way around. So that's why we see this G2 just popping off and bringing the West in to, uh, to relevance finally. I mean, in that second game against SKT, they brought out Pike top which is just, you know, like a symbol of their creativity in draft. And it's it's definitely yeah. been a, a huge advantage for them. But how much do you think this, like, surprise factor has really affected their results through the first four days of MSI? I think that team is so individually skilled that they're, they're, they're enabled to get away with things like that because of how much skill that roster has, right? And right. you should be looking to abuse that when you have that level of talent. And I think the fact that they're willing to to do these things that people it, you can't prepare for a pike top for example mm -hmm. right so being willing to like take that risk even though sometimes it it can backfire like when they picked vein um against ig for example exactly. the pros and the cons if you're willing to embrace that that style of like it's a 60 40 and we're gonna go all in on the 60 and if we're good enough we'll win you have to respect that because it, it's garnering results that we haven't seen before where teams actually have to chase a european team that's you know? true, but how so. about like, but how far it really is too far? Because like you mentioned that vein pick, it really backfired on them. How long can they keep this up? You know, the surprise factor if everyone yeah. starts expecting it too. I think, see, that's an interesting question because even if you know something's coming, mm -hmm. it's hard to practice or like prepare for everything. Right. So I think you do run the risk of maybe spreading too thin and having so many tricks that you don't actually master maybe just core fundamental play styles. But at the end of the day, I don't think we can know the answer to too far until we actually see it, what too far is. Because you say Pike top, like that's that's pretty far for me, man. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not sure we have an answer yet, but maybe by the end of this tournament we will. I would not be surprised the way uh, Graps has been drafting some of these <laughs> these team comps. But uh, I mean, the one real blemish that G2 has is an ugly loss of Fangu Buffalo. Obviously, when you're prepping for teams like Invictus and SKT, some of these lesser teams are probably going to, you know, not get as much prep time. So is that what you think the situation is? Is it just, you know, them trying to over uh, complicate things with like SKT and Invictus and you get less time with uh, looking into like Fangu Buffalo and Flash Wolves? I think in a tournament this small, that's not mm. usually an issue. I think it comes down to two things. So the first is best of one and you play a super, I don't want to call it a disrespectful style, but you play on what I like to call the line, right? The line being if you step over that line, like you can step a little bit, but if you step too far, you will lose the game real fast. And the problem against Fangu Buffalo not only did they overstep that line, but they got punished for it. And there's a huge misconception that, that there is this huge skill gap between these teams. I'm pretty sure Flash Wolves and PVB put those teams in LEC or LCS. They will contend in the top two or three. The skill gap is not that big. The problem is the way G2 plays, because they're just so much more skilled than these teams, if it backfires, like there's still not a way to come back into that game. And PVB actually did snowball it. So I don't think it's lack of preparation as much as just unlucky mm, they got they, yeah Fangu Buffalo just got that one game yeah um, so after two wins over SKT and a close game against IG it looks like G2 have really solidified themselves as the second best team in MSI is did they meet your expectations I know you're a fan of you know EU uh, did they meet your expectations they they definitely meet the expectations of representing Europe, but I still think there's a world where they can contest IG. Um, it sounds mm. silly to say like second place in, uh, at an international event is like meeting expectations, but that's just how, that's how good this team is. So as someone who I've, you know, coached in Europe for a long time, um, definitely happy to see them perform so well and hopefully they can take that into knockouts and work some magic uh, and make a run.
Yeah, it's definitely weird to see a European team being considered above a Korean team. I mean, even now at Worlds and now here at MSI, it's like they're finally made. The gap is they finally, finally made closing. For, 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 for EU, not, oh. not NA, though. Well, definitely not uh, NA. So, so let's skip over to Team Liquid because, I mean, you know, the, the hype was there as it always is. Team Liquid, this is the international team, right? This, they were built to compete on the international level, um, but they've only beaten Fangu Buffalo twice and they beat the Flash Wolves once. They're still battling with the Flash Wolves for fourth place. So what have you made of TL's showing thus far? This this one is always a hard one because, <laughs> you know, you look on paper and you see this team and you're just like, wow, they, they made all the upgrades. They're yeah. doing everything right. And they are they are, by all accounts, like an elite level team. But it's always the same problem for North America. When you look domestically at how we play, you look domestically at like what our skill gap is and how thin the elite talent is actually spread across the teams. We're just we're not developing enough like domestically to send teams internationally to perform at a high level and that's what you're seeing right now is tl is playing like a relatively efficient game but they're having to learn at the tournament how to like re-optimize and like how to really punish mistakes that they were not punished for back home in domestic so they're yeah, so they're coming in and they're like, this is what we think is best. And they're like, they're trying it and they're doing everything they can. But honestly, it's just they come from a region that like, we're just not that good and we don't mm. talk about it very well, much. Well, that's why, you know, competing at these international tournaments is so important for teams yeah. like from NA. Uh, so what would you like to see from Team Liquid if they were to improve their play and actually stand a chance at international tournaments? I mean, I think they're doing the best they can. They're running into the same problem that TSM did a few years ago, which is we're finally getting punished. Now we can actually learn. They're not really being contested, but like you're even seeing that they're making adjustments as the tournament goes on. Mm -hmm. um, they went 0-2 and now they're playing a little uh, faster. They're pulling the trigger on fights that maybe they don't feel comfortable with. And they took IG in a pretty close first 20 minutes before it, I mean, ultimately it'll fall apart against IG at some <laughs> point, right? So yeah. most teams do. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so there is improvement. It's just, it's such a short tournament that you kind of get that kind of gets lost along the way mm. the best they can do is embrace what they're best at protect your ad carry at all costs and just pray to god he won v9s <laughs> and uh hope for the best that's, that's probably their best chance that's possible yeah i want to focus in on impact a little bit because you know going into the tournament a lot of people viewed him kind of as a weak link on team liquid you know can he play carries and you know he's always on tank duty mm -hmm. when he's at his best but at uh, this term, he seems like he's the top performing member for Team Liquid. So how has he been able to exceed the expectations despite Team Liquid's still kind of mediocre results? I think he's found a small niche of champions that he's like relatively comfortable with. The obvious one being like he plays gangplank, yes. right? But but Impact's like greatest strength has always been the same thing, right? Which is he can absorb so much pressure and he can just deal with it, mm -hmm. right? But What's happening at this tournament is no one's actually going near him. They're just abusing mid and bot lane. Uh, there's a huge discrepancy with what's happening mid with Jensen and Nick Smithy versus every other team. They're probably the yeah. weakest duo jungle mid at the tournament. And Impact's just allowed to actually play League, right? So he's not a bad player. People have this huge misconception that, you know, he's the Maokai. It's like, <laughs> yeah, in North America, you want to win an LCS title, just pick a tank top and force mid at 45 minutes in game five and you'll win, right? But he gets to play the game and he can actually play. The problem is it's falling apart everywhere else on the map. We're just mm. finally seeing what he's still capable of. And it's, it's honestly pretty impressive. Right, so Koobs, do you think Team Liquid can actually make it out of knockout stage? <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, they'll finish, they'll finish fourth. Um, as, is, as is the Team Liquid yeah, way. It's perfect. Um, they'll probably draw IG and that's where it ends, but like, come on, like you finish fourth and IG picks you, it's tough, but I definitely think they're, out of those bottom three teams, they definitely are the best on paper. And it's clear that they're making like adjustments as fast as they can. As long as they just play their game, <clears throat> at least at least NA won't have to worry about not being in knockouts this year. Yeah, we'll I'm have just, to worry about the meme though. I'm, I'm worried about a potential tiebreaker against Flash Wolves because who knows what's gonna happen in that situation. True, I'm, I don't want to bet on Team Liquid. Aw, well, now that we thing. talked about... <laughs> <laughs> now that we talked about G2 and Team Liquid, let's shift focus over to Invictus and SKT, because this is the hype one. Before we do, though, let's check out the highlights from these top two teams from the East.
find the Rune Prison. That one's gonna be landing there. Flash of the Rupture. Hanabi trying to get himself away. Clid pursuing. Sonic Wave into the Resonating Strike. Damage coming through. One more hit will do it. Stun's coming through. Faker's able to find the damage. Flash Wolves are gonna be losing more men even sooner than they expected. Hanabi is down. Will they be able to make it too? Chelsea tries to get himself away. I don't think you're gonna be doing your Spider-Man cosplay much longer, my friend. He is out of there. Now we've got a fight towards the top side of Flid. Looks for when the knock will come in. Does not get her posted. Plenty of damage comes out here, and then even immune to the turret shot. And at some point, there's gotta be a root, but Clint's coming around as well. Elise might come in for a little bit more. Looks like the damage can't find that just yet, but here comes Glorexi. Big damage for Clint on a rampage now for the five He's kills. A monster. Looking for yet another double kill oh, on the Or JJ's walking down the lane, but he won't get there in time. It's no flash for Double to try to run over to his teammate. He's gonna oh. have a oh. and he doesn't have Devour yet. It's a level one for JJ. Mata dead makes it a second kill for Team Liquid, but Baker could find his own second. Gets the third thanks to Clint, and they're just cleaning up now. That's the ace in SKT in third place right now. Three and two to end the first round, Robin. No ultimate, but they have to respect him. The Shroud is there. Double up stepping forward. Has to be careful. Rookie does so much damage. Foul along with a taunt. Impact already taken down. Rookie gonna try to clean up the rest of the TL. The flash is two for Rookie. Meanwhile, Invictus Gaming getting that kill on the caps as well as the Inferno Dragon. Oh. Here goes Gangos. Oh. Nike X gonna be hurt up. Here's the counter initiation. Comes in. Foul on. Look at the lockdown. Three different people. Wonder gonna be taken very low. Foul on nearly falls, but Wonder's gonna be taken out next. Mickey X cut to pieces. If IG tries to continue the fight, they are gonna be four versus five, but the shot goes oh. the killing oh. three. Where is this? Jackie Love has pushed up the bottom lane in the they meantime. And, kill. and they're again. finding yet another entrance. Got more kills and assists than minutes in the game. And now number six. And they give it over to Jackie Love. Will they find more in the re-engage? And they've still got the cannon coming around the map. This 4v3, they will push forward. And Jackie Love just life steal takes the entirety of SKT. Finds himself the second kill. Not since Bangkok Titans got crushed four years ago. Invictus Gaming smash the world record. They smash SKT and IG are 4-0. It was very easy to tell which one of those Hecarim ults came from a Hecarim <laughs> and which one came from a Silas as Nyx once again starting off a fight, able to take down the enemy support, now gonna be in some trouble. Caught up in the Cataclysm, but still came <laughs> alive. However, now it's the rest of IG. Jackie Love pulls back the feathers. He's going on the killing spree. Balon's down to about 100 HP. Meliodas gonna be taken down. Invictus Gaming need a couple more auto attacks, and they will remain undefeated today. Yell getting Balon caught in a good throw attack. Balon's able to find the initiation. ning has got the kick down on the double. who's gonna be in some trouble. Shy and multiple people. That's a slicing maelstrom if I've ever seen one. Team Liquid gonna be losing some carries. Impact makes his way into the fight, but Jackie lets the feathers fly and gets himself out of danger. Expendia and Core JJ still looking to find the kill, but they won't be able to do it. And Invictus Gaming prove why they're the reigning world champion. Nick Smithy tunneling forward, looking to find the flash. Oh. Play instead, gonna be killed instantly. Liquid not on the same page, and IG hits him with the whole damn book. Core JJ's gone, Impact's gone, Team Liquid is gone, the next and Invictus Gaming will go 8 0. Invictus Gaming is perfect through four days of the mid season invitational, and they've also locked up first seed. Koops, what makes this team so damn dominant? <laughs> Where? Do, how long do we have? Right, let's go, <laughs> baby. <laughs> they, Tell us. Across across the board, they're just so. Every one of those players on any given day of the week can just carry a game. So pure skill is number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, the way they play League of Legends right now is what is technically the most effective. They fight. They push leads down your throat. They challenge you. And when they have to slow down, they do slow down. So they understand, like, we have a lead in, in this part of the map. Like, oh, okay, we are fighting and you cannot do anything about it. So they play fast and they understand this. Mm. On top of everything, they've just been a team that's been together now for quite a bit of time and they've won you know world championship they won lpl finally they're the unofficial world champions right now too so <laughs> they have all all these titles coming in they have all this experience together and time and they're skilled it is it is hard to pinpoint where you beat this team other than get ahead and hold on for your life and control them but that is much easier said than done I mean, the most impressive win for them, one game I want to hone in on, is that 16-minute win over SK Telecom. We never see SKT dominated like this. And it's Any a game team that, dominated like no, this. No, exactly. And it's a game where we saw SKT pick the Sona Terek, which isn't really a Korean special, um, but Invictus seemed to have like the picture-perfect way to, to beat uh, the Sona Terek. Is that what you think happened here? They just had it on lockdown? 
Uh, Jackie loves a Draven player, and they played Sona Tarek against Draven. It is, it is a tough one if you're not like really well versed in that strategy. And the problem with Sona Tarek, you need time. Right. I don't think that you are getting time against Invictus Gaming. <laughs> so they started the snowball on bot, and I mean you can't win on Sona Tarek if you're at 10, 12 minutes. And they tried to force fights because they had to, right? IG pushed the pace, they challenged the fights. Obviously, that game probably shouldn't have ended that fast, but that's that on my screen was also kind of a go next if I was SKT, just because it's True. too it's too hard to come back. You have no marksman, and you couldn't even make it to the to the mid game. So, so unlucky. Clear, yeah, unlucky. <laughs> Clearly, uh, this team loves to fight, like you've mentioned. They're always going at it, you know, <laughs> pressing the foot on that gas pedal. So, can you explain to us how they seem to execute team fighting so flawlessly? It's kind of a meme, right? You have the LPL and all their their aggression, but the truth being, like that is one of the most skirmish and fight heavy regions in the world, right? Mm. So you're playing against world class players in your own domestic region where everyone wants to push the pace, and so when you come to these events and you, they don't hesitate, if they see an opening, they all have this awareness of that player overstep. I'm TPing, like I'm flash alting and like watching Ning jungle. Ning is like, it's like a psychopath the way he jungles because he sees enemy AD carry, he will jump in and go one for one and he will just be smiling and you're just like, like terrifying. what? Yeah, it's terrifying because he's just smiling, you know? So like <laughs> they all they all team fight at this high level and there's just no hesitation and everyone knows exactly what to do. And when you have that much talent and you have like that kind of cohesion, Anytime you overstep or make a mistake, they just, mm. they punish you and there is no way to recover most of the time. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the praise of Invictus normally goes to the solo laners and, yeah. in, you know, the shy and rookie. But it seems like this tournament at MSI, it's been a lot of Jackie love. And I mean, he leads uh, in, in uh, kills in the tournament. Mm -hmm. So he's really been showing up. How has he been able to shine so much at MSI when his team is just stacked with all these other top players? I think he's not a very flashy player in lane. Like him and Bao Lan are definitely just mechanically sound. Like at a, like not sound rather, but at, they play at a high level. They don't push the limits that Rookie and the Shy do, right? Rookie and the Shy are the montage highlight reel, like 1v2. Mm -hmm. But Jackie Love understands his role. Most amount of damage I can, most amount of items I can have, and do not die in team fights. And be able to hit their back line. Mm -hmm. Jackie Love just does the three basics of AD carry at a much higher level than everyone else, and he generates his own leads, like 30, 40 CS, 2, 3K gold every single game. So quietly, when it gets to that point where you team fight, this guy's just an item ahead of the enemy team's AD carry, so he's just gonna output like triple the damage, and you're kinda like, where'd Jackie come from, <laughs> right? But he just quietly does his job, and it's yeah. getting to that team fight where you see the damage, you're like, oh, that's he's where here. he's been. Yeah, that's what he's doing behind everyone <laughs> while everyone's distracted. Um, so Invictus, obviously perfect so far at MSI. And you mentioned it earlier about the, you know what teams might have to do to beat Invictus. So at this point, it, which team would you think has the best chance at beating Invictus? That's hard because I think most people would expect me to say G2, but there's a problem, which is SKT is probably a better team from ahead Ooh. than G2 in terms of closing games because they don't play on the line. They they just textbook <clears throat> shut you out and they make you feel miserable while, while you're behind. Um, but that also means you, they're predictable, mm. <laughs> which means if they're predictable, IG has a window back in. <laughs> G2 is more unpredictable, so they're more inclined to throw, but they're just gonna <laughs> fight you, so there's a better... so. I'll pick G2 because let's go Europe, <laughs> but it's a real like, whichever whichever one of those two teams is better on that day, G2 SKT, the best version of both those teams, they can both take games mm. off. It really just is, uh, it's hard right now because there seems to be such a big gap between yeah. that IG and the rest of the field. If only we can fuse G2 and SKT together, pick the best parts <laughs> and just make a super team take down IG. That would be an interesting round. That's a new format, MSI, try it out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Um, yeah, let's, let's jump over to SKT now because, you know, we're used to seeing them be dominant no matter what stage they're on, whether it's Worlds, LCK, MSI, but mm -hmm. here they've looked pretty vulnerable, especially against G2. Where exactly do SKT's weaknesses lie on this team? This team just plays, they're trying to play faster, but it's the same problem TL has in NA, right? Korea plays a slower style, more controlled. They're trying to be more aggressive, but it's not at the same level as Europe or China, right? So they come to the event, 
they're also getting surprised by how fast these games are or how much they're being punished, they're having to adjust on the fly as well. The difference being SKT is obviously historically the most successful org of all time. They have the most legendary player of all time. Their adjustments are a lot more fast and they just look dominant the very next day, right? Mm -hmm. So for them, it's just a matter of time because I'm pretty sure they'll go away from this event, go back with all the new experience, play as fast as they can at home and try again at Worlds. So right now, the biggest flaws, they just haven't faced it enough, to be mm -hmm. honest. Well, let's look at the big picture here because, you know, SKT and Korea in general has had this reputation of being the best in the world. And now we're seeing like the gap is closing, especially between the Eastern teams. Yeah. Um, I want to take I want to get your take on it. Like, why do you think Korea as a region has just kind of, I guess, not been at the top recently? I mean, for four years they were, and Riot had to change the entire game <laughs> to make Scripted. them not good, right? <laughs> yeah. The, the script is leaked, but as soon as all the safety of vision and all the safety of 100% safe play like was taken away and that element of risk was added, that's the beauty of the element of risk. Some teams will thrive in it, and other teams, they won't. And for Korea, who for four years had perfected this 0% like risk-averse style, and they just become so dominant at it. This is a 180 from that. So mm -hmm. it's it's really just only been about a year of this style really being at the forefront with this less vision, more individual play, more more chaos, right? So we're one year in and they're already starting to climb back into that number three spot. They're kind of itching at G2 and you're like, they're almost back. Mm. It really is just give them some time that they are they are built to adjust and succeed at some point. So, so I'm Korean master pretty sure. race. <laughs> yeah. A I mean, Korea, Korea at Worlds, like fingers crossed, but like, let's go Europe at the same time. It's it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out for sure. For sure. Coop said chaos and chaos means China. So that's, <laughs> chaos, that's how it's going I thought chaos right style now. was an EU thing. That's Fiesta. A, EU Fiesta. Fiesta's different than chaos. Fiesta's though. a little yeah, different. Yeah. All right, all right. All right, Coops, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate talking MSI with you. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. It was fun. All right, Matt. So we got one day left of the group stage. Right. Which games should we be looking at? Well, I think the big storyline here is obviously between Team Liquid and Flash Wolves for that final knockout spot. Everything else is pretty much decided. Um, but going into the last day, I mean, Team Liquid is going up against SKT and G2, which might mean that they're going to lose both games. Uh, <laughs> if you just look at, you know, the level of competition, that's probably where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. Flash Wolves currently one game behind Team Liquid in the standings, but they have the matchup against Fong Vu Buffalo, which ah. should theoretically be a win. And that might set up an uh, all or nothing tiebreaker for that fourth spot going into knockout stage. So that's obviously very exciting if we end up going that route. So uh, that's what I'm looking at. So keep an eye on that tiebreaker. All right, we love more games. All right, so the group stage isn't completely over yet, but I want to know for your player of the week group stage. So who sure. has impressed you so far? Through the first four games, I think the guy you have to look at is Jackie Love. We talked to Koops about him a little bit. And obviously, he's a guy who kind of gets lost under the, the spot, uh, the star power of, you know, Rookie, the shy, mm. Ning. This is a loaded team, and usually they're the ones who make those shiny plays, those flashy out plays, the one v twos, whatever. Um, but Jackie Love is that that constant force, and he's really been showing up. Whether it was the Draven against SKT that really helped them get that 16-minute win, or his 10-kill Kaisa performance. I mean, he's just leading the tournament in kills. He's up there in KDA, and I think he's kind of the guy that's just super constant. And in all the craziness that IG has, right. he's the one guy who just constantly does his job. So I think it's got to go to Jackie Love, and he's just like the backbone, which is weird to say that the AD carries the backbone, but I, I think that he's the guy who's kind of holding things down for Invictus. That's true. It's definitely been impressive so far. Well, there's a lot more MSI action, so you guys make sure to tune in this weekend for the knockout stage. Tomorrow on the show, on this couch, AJ Fry and Ron Lee will Overwatch. be going all in on the Overwatch League Stage 2 playoffs. So until then, make sure to check out on all our socials at Squad State, and we'll see you tomorrow.